life and death is what you do with Jesus. The biblical Jesus. Because you got to be warned because the, the Bible says there's another Jesus. There's a Mormon Jesus that came to North America and visited people that archaeology can't find. In places of America that archaeology has not discovered and will never discover. That they followed the angel Baloni. So lustful Joseph Smith can get multiple women, even married women. That Joseph Smith died in the hands of husbands in jail. That's the Mormon religion. And if you do what the Mormons tell you, you can populate outer space by marrying multiple wives and having multiple children. And you can please baloney. Because that's a bunch of baloney. And yet that's one of the biggest growing by millions, maybe not billions, of a religion. And they get dressed up and they go on their bicycles and they go tell people about baloney. And Bible-believing Christian Baptists, they stay home, they sit on the couch, They get fellowships, but they don't tell people about Jesus. Shame on them. Oh, hi, can you, would you like to come to church Sunday with us? And what if they died Saturday night? What if they died the early morning of Sunday? They didn't get to go to church. And they died and went to hell with the invitation, come to church. When the biblical invitation is, come now, let us reason together, says God. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. That's the biblical invitation. The biblical command for a Christian, what is the will of God in my life? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ suffered and died. According to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's no movies. There's no fried chicken. It is the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You say, well, you know, didn't Jesus feed the 5,000? And where were they at the cross of Jesus? The only count I read of Jesus on that cross was the Apostle John and Mary. Everybody else had a picnic sitting there watching him die. They made a picnic. The soldiers are sitting there taking the garments of Jesus Christ and snake eyes. Okay, I get that. While the body of Jesus Christ, God, hung on that cross naked. I would not even dare and could not draw a picture of Jesus on that cross. Because there was nothing to cover his naked body. As you will be naked one day before God. Open in your sins when you have rejected Jesus. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only way to get rid of your sin is by the Lamb of God. That takes away the sin of the world. Where the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
It's so simple. Anybody can be saved. God does not refuse any. I met Jesus Christ and got saved as an 18-year-old punk. An 18-year-old punk, punk that was doing marijuana and crack cocaine. An 18-year-old punk, I didn't bother with beer. I drank Bacardi and I brought my own Bacardi. Several times, DUI. I was arrested for buying liquor underage. I took someone in a drunken rage and threw him out of my car. And there are other disgusting, filthy things I've done in my life. April 25th, 1987, Jesus Christ came into my life. I believed on him. I became sin. I became saved. And all my sins were put under the blood. And somebody come up to you, hey, Stiley, I remember when you used to do crack. I mean, God doesn't remember it. Neither do I. As far as the east is from the west, you can be cleansed of your sins. Both before you're saved and after you're saved. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us by the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, and you are a sinner. And sinners that reject Jesus Christ will hear, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, sinners. I never knew you. When you have rejected God and Jesus Christ, you are not known by God. And you don't know God either. You may know a God small G-O-D, but you don't know capital G-O-D until you know Jesus Christ who is God. And again, be forewarned, there is another Jesus. There are a dime a dozen plus shipping and handling, and Amazon will deliver you some of them. But there's one Jesus, one God, one salvation, one baptism, and one Bible, the King James. That there is salvation in no other and any other. And then they got to hear me. Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. I never get tired of preaching and talking about Jesus. It's the same thing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know, they got to change the songs on the radio. If they played the same junk day after day after day, people would turn it off. you got to have something frangle. you got to have something new. you got to have something uplifted. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. You may be worried about the Delta virus. I'm not. I got the Alpha and the Omega, Jesus Christ. I got the God that made Delta virus. That allowed Delta virus. Hey, China made, made COVID-19, but God allowed it. I have the God that made Hurricane Henry. And is guiding Hurricane Henry to where God wants him to go. And your weather forecasters and your Noah ain't going to do nothing about it. Your Mary ain't going to stop, Henry. Why don't you start naming these hurricanes the wrath of God, the wrath of God. The insurance companies do. 
Insurance companies say it's the wrath of God. It's an act of God. The insurance companies are smarter than you are. The flooding and the fires, the extreme heat is by God. God trying to get you to come to Jesus Christ and repent. One day, one day, the, God's going to say, that's it, I'm done. Jesus, go get your bride. And the rapture's going to happen. And you're going to set up one day on a Saturday. You're going to say, well, I'm going to the farmer's market. I'm going to make some money. And that loud mouth preacher is going to show up again. Because he's been there every Saturday. Every Saturday, that loud mouth preacher. That loud mouth preacher ain't going to show up. He's going to be in glory. But if you reject Jesus Christ, you won't be in glory. You'll be left behind. You won't even believe what God will have in store in this earth after we are gone. God's got the ultimate health care coming in the book of Revelation. You know that? God is going to have these creatures that got scorpion tails. And they're going to, to bite you or stab you, whatever scorpions do. And when you are stricken by these scorpions, I forget if it's three or five months, six months, but months, plural, you are going to be in agonizing pain. In the tribulation period, after the church is gone. And you're going to go to your doctor. You're going to go to your pharmacist. And there's going to be no relief for that pain. And you're going to go sit on the railroad tracks. And that train is going to hit you. But there's no death. The Bible says they're going to want to die, but there'll be no death. You're going to get on top of the tallest building. And you're going to do the most greatest belly flop on the street below. And you're going to hit that street. You're going to be hit by a Greyhound bus, and you're still going to live. That's God's health care plan for those that reject Jesus Christ. And that moment of the rapture could be now, could be a second from now. It could be a minute from now, a day from now, a week from now, a month or a year. We don't know when the rapture is going to happen. You don't know when death is going to happen. And once you taste death, You can't put your quarter back in the pinball machine and start the game over. Once death comes, that's it. You can't go back. And if you go to heaven by Jesus Christ, you can't come back and do more for Jesus. Every Christian that goes to glory will wish he had done more. You mean that great preacher, all that he'd done, he's going to wish he'd done more. And every man that wakes up in the place called hell cannot come back and say, okay, I'll believe in that Jesus. There are no second chances after death. None at all. Now you may get second chance while living. They 
They might give you CPR. They might resuscitate you. They might put you in the hospital, and then you come out of the hospital. You might get a second chance there. You better thank God, especially if you're lost. You know, I just had a weird thought. I get them every once in a while. Now, what I'm speaking right now, I don't know. You can probably maybe take this up and crumple it up and throw it in the garbage. I don't know. But I know the Bible says for those at the great white throne judgment, they're going to proclaim that Jesus is the Lord. Yes, you that reject Jesus Christ is going to one day say, Jesus, you're the Lord. As you fall into the lake of fire. Now what I was thinking, and I could be wrong, At your standing at the great white throne judgment because you rejected Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be interesting of God that he calls everybody that witnessed to you? You found a gospel track and that, the Lord brings up that person that left the gospel track. Your co-worker, your family tries to tell you about Jesus and you reject it. Someone has shown you a Bible and you, you reject it. Even the street preacher Saturday morning is called up. Everybody in your life that has told you or tried to tell you about Jesus. Wouldn't it be interesting if we are all called up at your presentation at the great white throne judgment and you have to turn to us and say, thank you very much for trying to tell me. I was a fool to reject you and your Savior. Now, I will tell you one thing at the Great White Throne Judgment. This is Bible. If you, the Christian, do, do not tell them about Jesus, you're going to face their condemnation with blood on your fingers. And if you don't tell them about Jesus, and there are people I have not told about Jesus, I should have, would not God be on the flip side for those that do tell people of Jesus and rejected Jesus? You stand your trial. Listen, you may have to hear me every week after week after week, and if you reject Jesus Christ, I might stand your jury trial. What says the preacher? Hey, I tried to tell him about Jesus. And he never believed. Guilty. You know, the Bible says that the word of God in your words will rejudge. The Bible says that man shall give an account of every idle word. That's amazing. Everything we said that's not under the blood of Jesus Christ will be called out. Both verbal and thought. God knows what you're saying and recording it. And God knows what you're thinking and is recording it. Your very thoughts are sin. The Bible says, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery. Pornography is an adultery. You look at that woman in a, in a bathing suit and you get those desires, the Bible says, that's adultery. You're just thinking about it. You don't have to climb in bed with that woman. You just got to think about it. And if the Bible says every idle word, Matthew chapter 7, man shall give an account. Woo-wee. You better put your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ.
It ain't Santa Claus making a list and checking it twice. He don't know if you've been naughty or nice. But the Bible says in Proverbs, the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. It's amazing it says the evil and good. Why is evil first? Proverbs 15. Because we are prone to do that which is wrong more than we do that which is right. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. That's quoted in Psalms. It's quoted two times in Psalms. When the Bible repeats something twice or three times or four times, or five times. It's very important. The Gospels record four times the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. One Gospel records the birthday of Jesus. What is important of the life of Jesus is the death of Jesus Christ for our sins. You can have all the birthdays you want for Jesus. We don't even know when he was born. He was not born December 25th, but we know that Jesus died on Abed 14, 6 p.m. You say, well, preacher, what's Abed 14? That's the Passover. Jesus Christ knew what day he would die, he knew what date he would die, he knew what year he would die, and he knew what hour he would die. We don't know. And yet death may come suddenly in our life. Everybody has a to-do list. And there are people who died with a to-do list that was never finished. When you visit a house of a, of a loved one who died, you will find doctor appointment cards. They have a dentist appointment. They have to see their cardiologist. They got, they're not going. If I were to die today or tomorrow, I have a couple weeks of sleep therapy therapy appointment. I won't make it. I'm supposed to start school Monday. I'm not going to make it. And if you die without Jesus Christ as far as heaven, you're not going to make it. You better get your appointment. You better get your reservations. You get on the prayer line and you contact Jesus Christ and say, I believe what that preacher is saying. I believe that Jesus Christ is able to save me of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Lord Jesus, take my sins and put them under the blood. I believe. And you don't have to be in the church building. Baptism doesn't happen to after salvation. It's nothing that you can record on your IRS forms. But it's a date that you can write down. The day you believe on Jesus is the day that you're born again. That's the day that's important. That's the day that Jesus came into your life. And you believe. Now Jesus can come into your life. And he can leave just as quick. You know, we all know the story of Jesus walking on the water. But do you know what the Bible records about Jesus walking on the water? That the disciples were in the ship, it was a storm. And the Bible says Jesus would have walked right on by. Maybe even waving. 
and the disciples called out to Jesus. Jesus would not have gotten into that boat if the disciples would let him go. He would have left them. And if you're not going to call out to Jesus for salvation, he's going to walk on by. And you may say, well, I'm sick and tired of that preacher. I'm sick and tired of that preacher. And maybe this week you're going to die. And you're going to go to hell because you let Jesus walk on by. And when your soul wakes up in hell, I know what you're going to say. This is not supposed to happen. Death was supposed to be it. There was nothing else supposed to happen after death. That's a fairy tale that the devil told you. There is life after death in the Bible. Heaven by Jesus Christ and hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. There is no other way but through the cross. There is no other cleansing but by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. You can't wish your way into heaven. You cannot do your way into heaven. You can't force your way into heaven. You can't hope to get to heaven but by Jesus Christ. And only by the blood of Jesus Christ can you get into that utopia, that paradise called heaven which will be New Jerusalem that Jesus came to save sinners Jesus came to seek that which was lost and if you never put your faith and trust in Jesus you're lost and when you die you'll crash and burn and there'll be no one to put the flames out there are firefighters in hell. But they're not going to extinguish the fire. There are no fire hydrants in hell. There's no water in hell. There's no relief. No CO2. Just a lake of fire that burneth forever. Life and death is what you do with Jesus. And the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Because I have the shepherd. I have the good shepherd who is also the door. He's the water of life. He's the bread of satisfaction. He's the bread that won't ruin your diabetes. He's not like this commercial bread. No, he is filling. He's the fullest and the purest. He is the way and the truth and the light. He is the lamb, the lion, the tribe of Judah, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God. So that's the Jehovah Witnesses. He's the great I am. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And
and without faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he will be your enemy. And believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, he's your savior. He's your rock, your shield. In your hands you can hold the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. What pleases God is when His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is exalted. God is pleased, Romans chapter 10. That out of the mouth of one, Jesus Christ is lifted up. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring glad tidings. Glad tidings, good news, is what gospel means. The world gives you fake news. There are Christians today... And they're not doing it publicly. But there are Christians today in Afghanistan. And they're going to be killed by a peaceful religion. <laughs> and I'm telling you, before they take their death and see Jesus, Many of them are going to proclaim that Jesus suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. At the end of a sword that will take their life. And they have no constitution. They have no rights. They have no freedom. And they will die because they proclaim the blood of Jesus Christ. In and by the hands of what the world said is a peaceful religion called Islam of the devil. And with the freedom, with the rights, and the Constitution, shame on the American Christians that don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalms, it is pleasing at the death of the saints to the Lord. And in Afghanistan, there are plenty of saints coming home to a homecoming both yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The reports I am hearing if you have a Bible on your telephone you will die. Yet Jesus Christ even in the land of Islam can save a Muslim. Islam does not stop Jesus Christ from saving. There is no sin that Jesus cannot save. You're never bad enough. You're never terrible enough. Where you cannot call upon the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. There is no sin that God cannot save you from. There is no sin that God cannot cleanse you from. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And it's singular. One sin. Because all sin is grumped together. When Jesus Christ died on that cross. 
he took all sin. Even sins that I did not do. But he took all the sins that I have done. And he has cleansed them through the blood of Jesus Christ. God's satisfaction is the satisfaction that Jesus Christ saves. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. This message has been approved by God through Jesus Christ. 